Welcome back, everyone, to theCUBE's coverage here at Avis reInvent. We're here in the Venetian on the floor here in the action, bringing all the all the news, the thought leadership, and explaining all the, the new announcements. It's been like a, it's holiday season, all the gifts from reInvent keep coming. We're going to unpack it. We're going to unpack SageMaker. And Chris here, director, GM of Amazon SageMaker AI. Anchor, great to see you. Thanks for coming back on theCUBE. Appreciate you uh, spending some time with us. Thanks for having, having me. I'm excited to be here. The, um, what a great event. Um, I mean, the keynotes were great. Peter's Monday night was like enough content to keep you full for six months. Yeah. Uh, a lot of, lot of in innovation on the infrastructure side. Um, just advancements, just looking at all the performance that's happening, all the innovation at scale. Uh, amazing stuff, and obviously the keynote, Matt and Andy Jassy came on stage, uh, and again, unveiled, and then Swami's keynote, you can start to see where the AI is going end to end. Yeah. We start to see that, you know, things like zero ETL, he would, were, you know, oh, yeah, now it's just like standard zero ETL, and S3, yes. table buckets, I mean, come on, amazing work across the board for the team. Um, one of the things that came out of this event is that Bedrock clearly is that middle layer for models, the model, model selection and, and dealing with that for developers inference is a building block, but SageMaker was one of the stars of the show. Um, and it's, it's now clearly understood or defined within Amazon's stack where it sits to run and help provision and manage all the underlying greatness of what's now training him to. You get the ultra servers, all kinds of, of, of advancements. You got the NVIDIA relationship expanding. So a lot of great hardware and advancements. So again, that's good for the business. SageMaker becomes now integral part of the system. Exactly. Okay, so you got this, I called it the shim layer, Dave Brown and I were riffing on this, but it's really there to help. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Now it's called SageMaker AI because it's expanded. Yes. Okay, so let's get down and dirty on the SageMaker AI. It's the same SageMaker with more stuff, basically. So yes. Explain the positioning of SageMaker, where it sits, its role, what's its goal, how are people using it, how will people be using it, as more, you know, uh, models get trained, fine-tuned, and as developers start tapping into the inference building block. So, yes. go ahead. Thank you, John. So, <laughs> let me give you a little bit of a background on how SageMaker has evolved. So, we launched SageMaker back in 2017, and uh, it's been our, uh, you know, a service for building training and deploying machine learning models. Uh, today, it's used by hundreds of thousands of, uh, of AWS customers. And you know, a few years ago, uh, machine learning was mostly a, uh, a data scientist uh, uh, right. pursuit. And data scientists were taking data within organizations and building machine learning models. And then over the years, we saw uh, more personas getting involved. We saw ML ops engineers getting involved to actually put those models in production. Then we saw data engineers get involved to help uh, data scientists prepare data uh, to build these models. And then we saw business stakeholders get involved uh, in the decision-making process, et cetera. And then what we did over the years was uh, at AWS to work backwards from each persona and think about what tool uh, can we build for them uh, to make their, their lives easier, but also build these tools in an integrated way. So that's the role SageMaker has played uh, till now, and it has become you know, um, a very popular service for building train deployment machine learning models. What has happened in the past, uh, what we've seen in the past year or so, is that a lot of customers told us that, you know, they are seeing that they, they oftentimes, they want to, uh, you know, analyze their data and manage their data and build, train, deploy AI models together. And they wanted to see yeah. our services and tools that do, that solve these problems to work together. And uh, which is why, um, you know, at this reInvent, we launched something called um, Amazon SageMaker Unified Studio, which now uh, provides single pane of glass, a unified interface for customers for both data and AI model building. And so that's what we launched. And as part of that, what we've done is uh, the, what was known as SageMaker before is now known as SageMaker AI. It's the same service, but with more capabilities. And, uh, but SageMaker is now the center, is a platform for all of data and AI. And if, but go ahead, please. And, and so it understands the the underlying role of the job you're trying to do, right? So like, exactly. If I'm running stuff on EC2 the old way, well, like the way people do it, um, SageMaker has knowledge about things. So for example, if you're running Kubernetes on EKS, for instance, and you want nodes or get a spin up some nodes, all this stuff has to happen. 
SageMaker does that, right? SageMaker does things like that, right? Yes, SageMaker manages uh, those tasks on your behalf, and that's why it's a, it's a managed service. So, for example, if you were to uh, uh, build a model or you were to deploy a model, then SageMaker or SageMaker AI now would actually provision the infrastructure and, uh, you know, uh, set up the tools and take your data and, and run the job to do that task. It has knowledge behalf. about the job you're trying to run. Right. It has That's the context. The... It has the knowledge about what you're trying to do. And then it can orchestrate that. It can provision the infrastructure and it can orchestrate that task for you. So, Dave, on, on the cloud native world, in Kubernetes world, you know, as Kubernetes gets boring and more like Linux, which we all love, there's a lot of things that have to go on to get set up for the job. Right. Right. And that's like blocking and tackling, right? You got to get that done. Chopping wood, carrying wood, whatever the metaphor you want. That's like the, the meme. One does not just deploy <laughs> Kubernetes. Right? We've yeah. all seen this. Yeah. Right? yeah, but again, that's just one instance. You have to do all this work to set up the infrastructure for the large language model, whether you're training or fine yep. tuning. That's right. So that's a lot of heavy lifting that you got to do. That's right. And, Sage and that's where SageMaker, SageMaker does that. Yes. In and the past, it was like spin up some EC2, do some stuff, build some stuff around it. Now, SageMaker now. Exactly. And that involved a lot of undifferentiated heavy lifting yeah. and that, you know, uh, customers had to spend time and resources doing that and now they don't have to. And SageMaker. And SageMaker that. AI, what yep. was formerly SageMaker, it was, you know, some of this primitive, yep. right, if I could. And then, but the umbrella is now expanded. Yes. Right? You described that. But so, we, but backing up just a little bit, the way it was positioned in the keynote is we see analytics and AI using the same data. Yeah. Um, and so we see those worlds coming together. So it really is data, analytics, and AI coming together, coming together. which yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yes. Um, it was interesting. I think there was a comment. Like, not a lot of people are thinking that way, maybe some yes. of your competitors, but certainly we think that way. Yeah. Um, bring it all together. That's what we want. So we can serve up these agents someday. But, yeah. uh, but okay, so maybe you could describe that and describe that umbrella. Yeah. So uh, essentially the umbrella... Until you know, a few days ago, yeah. included only tools for building, deploying, uh, training, and deploying AI models, and now it uh, also include uh, data tools. So for a unified, for unified access to uh, all your data, and organizing that data, and then finally uh, using it to build, train, and deploy models. As in addition to that, we've also made uh, Bedrock IDE. Um, which provides an interface for you to build generative AI applications using Bedrock. That is also now available uh, uh, through the uni uh, SageMaker Unified Studio. And then SageMaker Unified Studio, which sort of becomes the single pane of glass or the unified interface for this umbrella, um, also provides centralized governance across all your uh, data that you're using Um for your data and management and AI workloads. So here's the way I think about it. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Anchor. So I'm going to try to simplify because it's it's very nuanced, but it's important. Bedrock is for the speed option. I want to do some rag, do some vector embeds. I'd use Bedrock. A lot of enterprises might use that, and it runs. SageMaker is when I want to like do stuff, like build stuff myself, tap into EC2 a little bit, kind of do more customization. It's like crafting it yep is so, that right so when you want to take data and augment data and then uh build or train or fine-tune a model then you use SageMaker in it and then uh now you can deploy those models on SageMaker as well but then with Bedrock what you do is you have models that ready and you focus on building a generative AI application out of it using a gen uh, generative AI app building tools in Bedrock, such as guardrails, agents, RAG, yeah. et cetera. And uh, we also are, um, you know, have created an integration between uh, SageMaker and Bedrock. So if you have, for example, um, fine-tuned a large language model in SageMaker, you can import its model weights, as we say, into Bedrock, and then use Bedrock to access that model in a serverless way. Yeah, Bedrock's just an easy interface. SageMaker does all the work, sets things up. Right. Kind of like the old days. Spin up some servers, run your application on them. I'm oversimplifying, but you know, that's how the old SaaS model was. So SageMaker is the key layer, SageMaker AI, for getting up and running, basically, with AI. That's right. And I think it was Matt said, this is not just a bunch of tools that we've cobbled together. 
it's um, sort of an integrated. So this, what's interesting is you know Amazon always has not gone away from its primitives and its you know ability to get you know fine grained services. Yeah. But you're simplifying the experience. I mean, I don't know if it's a solution or not, but it's is that the right way to think about all this umbrella? That's correct. You know, and we work backwards from our customers and their needs while designing and building these these tools. Um, and each of these tools solve a particular uh, problem and may also cater to a different persona. So, for example, um, we have managed notebook environments which data scientists use to write their code and execute and experiment with it. But then we also have other tools for building automated pipelines where models can go from you know, trained models to then testing and then deployment and, uh, and uh, model monitoring. And that's actually used by MLOps engineers. So we have different tools, but we've built this uh, experience in a way where the handoff is seamless from one persona to another. And it's an integrated environment. It has access to the same context, to the same data, the same models. And, and, and the services of the umbrella, yes, the, the lake house, governance, you know, et cetera, yes. are, are all th there as well. All integrated. integrated. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing, the thing about training them too, one of the things that came out of the, um, the show was the new enhancements. You got the ultra servers, the neural link. So if I want to run, say, some capacity blocks, right. I use SageMaker. Right, so this is where it starts to get really into the crafting yeah. uh, and orchestration of what I'm trying to do. Why would I get capacity blocks? I want ultra high performance. That's right, and 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 John, we launched that capability actually uh, yesterday. Yeah, uh, where now you can uh, with SageMaker you can spin up capacity blocks and 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 build models over those. Talk about that because I think yeah. this is a nuance. Again, this is again, this is all under the hood kind of stuff because yeah. this is what people want. So I want to run a GPU cluster. I want high performance. Yes. You got to get in and yes. configure. Yes. I'm not to oversimplify. I remember the old days. Put your credit card down, stand up some EC2, run a web app. Yes. Really cool, right? Back in the old days. Ain't the word these old. Andy would hate that. But, you know, Cloud One, that was easy. And that was yeah. great. That's Amazon. Here, I can set up a supercomputer basically. Yeah. So let me, blocks. yeah, let me tell you how we solve this problem. So uh, in the last couple of years, as customers sort of uh, transition from just doing predictive model building to generative AI model development, both training, fine tuning, deployment, we saw some new challenges emerge uh, because these uh, generative AI models require, as you, as you mentioned, a GPU or a Trinium cluster or accelerated uh, compute cluster to, to do your work on in a, in a distributed way. So we saw new challenges emerge in terms of setting up and scaling your jobs across a large number of uh, GPUs or Trinium um, instances. And uh, you know, uh, given the nature of the work, even if there was there's one infrastructure fault, even if one GPU uh, fails, then your entire cluster is, is down. So we realized that, oh, at this scale, fault, fault tolerance is really important. Then we found, you know, realized that, oh, uh, how well your cluster resources are being utilized by a, by a model training job is really important. So because of these new challenges, we thought that, hey, we needed to solve this in a different way uh, because of which last reInvent we announced um, SageMaker HyperPod, which is a purpose-built uh, capability for generative AI model development. And uh, so in... in Hyperpod, you can basically easily set up a GPU or a Trinium cluster, and you can easily um, scale up uh, your cluster and manage the cluster with uh, familiar tools. Um, and uh, also, SageMaker takes care of automatically re resolving any health uh, node health issues within the cluster and sort of provides a self-healing cluster environment and uh, also improves the performance of your training fine-tuning jobs um, within within mm -hmm. that environment, and we've launched some new capabilities in Hyperpod that I'd lo love to tell you more. So, about. so could you summarize the launches? Because uh, yeah, and like what's like in preview, what's in GA? What help Absolutely. us understand the map? Because uh, Absolutely. Honestly, yeah. So, um, you know, the first challenge that customers run into when they want to, let's say, run a generative AI development um, job, whether it's training or fine tuning, is hey, how do I easily find a compute capacity and, and set up my infrastructure. And sometimes the compute capacity, as you know, there's a high demand 
for accelerated compute for GPUs, Tranium. And uh, so oftentimes customers don't find it, they find the capacity when they need it, where they need it, um, and also not in a, in a, uh, in a continuous way. So uh, to make that easier, now we have a capability in a hype part called fle flexible training plans where customers can specify that, hey, within the next, let's say, two months, I want um, to train with a certain kind of compute for about 20 days. And, uh, and then SageMaker goes and finds the most optimal um, plan to execute that job. Uh, it also finds chunks of capacity, which are powered, uh, which we, it, it, it secures through EC2 capacity blocks and then creates a plan for you. And the plan may look like, well, your training will start at this time and then pause at this time between capacity and unavailability. And then it will start again when capacity is available. So it creates an entire plan for you. And when you approve it, 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 it sets up the infrastructure for you to do execute that job and easily uh, you can summit the job and it easily executes that job yeah. across. Yeah, and then you can stand it up, you can pull it down, it's elastic. It's just exactly. a classic AWS value proposition. Exactly. So that's the yeah. that's the first yeah. uh, so SageMaker SageMaker is really highlighting the capacity blocks announcement last year. This puts, brings it to life with Tranium 2. This makes it much more easier. And yeah. Tranium 2 is is part of this, yeah. is, is supported as part of yeah. Yeah. Well, capacity blocks. Um, and, um, and By the way, I was talking to the poolside guys yesterday, and they love the performance. They were in the early uh, yeah. access to that. And they said they saw 40% of the number that was quoted, but without even touching anything. With, Instant. Yeah, we we're very excited about... Uh, you know, what <laughs> new innovations customers will drive yeah. with Trinium too. You guys crushed it this year on the on the infrastructure stuff. Thank you. Gotta say. Yeah. Um, so were there other pieces? So, to, yeah. So so that's the the first part. Which and that's is, a, that's a available. Just yeah. generally available. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as of yesterday. So that's the first problem, which is about hey finding build capacity and setting up the infrastructure. The second challenge customers run into is okay. Well, I've got my infrastructure set up now. Now I, now I want to train a fine tune a model, and that requires weeks of experimentation, t tweaking you know different parameters and uh, optimization, applying different op optimization techniques to actually get to the most optimal performance. And uh, and many a times customers are using publicly known model architectures such as the Llama architecture, Mistral architecture, Mistral architecture, etc. So we thought, well, why is every customer doing the same? Like we know our infrastructure, we know what these model architectures look like. Why don't we just op, you know do that optimization and let every customer use it? So, which is why yesterday we uh, announced um, Hyperpod recipes uh, as being generally available. So these are pre-optimized and benchmarked recipes, um, which customers can just get started with. They can pick the model architecture that they want to train or fine tune with, and these take care of applying the, the most optimal parameters for your training or fine tuning job. They also, you know, uh, make other decisions on, on your behalf, such as selecting the appropriate checkpointing frequency so that, you know, your work is being optimally saved as your work, as your job executes. So really it, it helps you get started with training or fine tuning, uh, generative AI models, um, you know, in minutes. And that's, been available today? That's generally available. GA? Okay, yes. great. Other? Yeah, so, okay, so once you've gotten up and running, um, our customers told us that, you know, over a period of time, uh, the number of generative AI model development projects within their organization increase, and they usually have a... AI sprawl. Yeah, they have a larger backlog of ideas to try than they have, you know, the, the capacity and the resources to... Uh, to execute on them. And um, what happened was, and I, I actually tell you an, a, a story from Amazon here, like this, the same thing happened at Amazon where a lot of teams were executing and trying out different ideas in parallel, and they each had their own compute cluster that they were operating on. And what, as a result of that, what happened was some teams left their compute clusters underutilized, while some teams couldn't get enough compute capacity. Mm -hmm. So we said, okay, we need to solve this problem because this is slowing us down. <laughs> so internally, we built a service that combined all the compute capacity together one in, in, in a, single, a single pool 
and built a governance layer on top to let all teams execute their jobs on that one cluster um, in a way where jobs were prioritized and capacity was managed um, you know, appropriately. So we said, okay, well, our AWS customers also face the same problem, so why don't we ex you know, externalize the solution? So that's what we launched as Hyperbot Task Governance yesterday. Uh, the way it works is you can create a Hyperbot cluster, and this is a cluster of GPU or Trinium instances, and as an administrator, you can go to a console and say, hey, I'm going to uh, have team A, B, C, D uh, run on the shared cluster. I can, I'm going to define uh, compute budgets or limits for each of these teams. Let's say team A gets these many X number of GPUs and team B gets Y number of GPUs and so on and so forth. And I can define priorities across different types of tasks, whether it's training, fine tuning, inference, um, etc. I can define preemption rules. So for example, I can say that, hey, if a higher priority job comes along, it should the system should pause the lower priority job to make space for the higher priority job. Damn. And also set up rules that can say that that say that okay, if team A is underutilizing their capacity, compute capacity, then team B's jobs should automatically run on that idle capacity to utilize it. And then you can ask you ask all your teams and all your to run all their jobs on one shared cluster and then hyperpart goes and dynamically allocates capacity to all the tasks adhering to the prioritization rules it sounds like an operating are. system to me uh, it's, it's it fun. feels like an operating system but you bringing i mean this is incredible to me because the power that you guys are bringing to the market yes. that's supercomputing yes you're bringing ai clusters at just standing them up again like servers but it's not. They're systems. These are engineered systems that that's, are being managed by the SageMaker layer and just it's almost custom building. That's true. And and these clusters are not easy to manage. Yeah. And they, they require a lot of time and effort. And that takes time uh, and resources away from doing actually you know, actual value added work. That's where work. the recipes come in. That's where recipes come in. That's where yeah. you know flexible training plans come yeah, it, yeah. comes in, and that's also where this new task came in. And um, Andy was just telling us on our we had an exclusive video. Andy and you know Dave asked him some some pointed questions around can the few how do you see the future? He went to his you know I won't say canned response, but it was pretty much the Amazonian way, which is we're just trying to get the cost down because the big pressure now is costs. That is because true. if you don't configure something properly, one you're not optimized. Yeah. Two. You will just spend too much because it's you know it's still expensive as a resource. Exactly. So getting squeezing as much performance, price performance, and again this is again back to price performance. You want price performance. You don't want just price. Exactly. Right? So price performance. This is a key part of tuning the price performance equation. And that was your internal motivation here, and now you pointed it externally as you were so exactly. And, and you totally. built the governance on top. So it's not bolted on after the fact. Exactly, and we're seeing uh, customers uh, reduce their costs up to uh, up up to forty percent with just this task governance capability, mm -hmm. because it lets you get more work done within the finite amount of resources. And this is GA as well. This is also generally available. Yeah. Give us some examples of more customers. Like, here's some use cases. Who's using it? What are you seeing? What are some of the early things uh, from a configuration standpoint, from a recipe standpoint? How are people using the pods? Give us some use cases. Which customers? I know Poolside was mentioning a little bit of work, but they didn't go into great detail. I know Intuit is leaning in to this. They're one of your big customers. They have like yeah. personalized systems. I think that's what I've heard. Share. That, yeah. So uh, you know, a lot of the new uh, generative AI models that are being built or fine tuned on AWS today are now being done. Uh, you know, trained or fine tuned on SageMaker Hyperbot. So for example. Uh, yesterday, you saw uh, Luma AI present in Swami's keynote, and they talked about yep. how they built the new uh, Ray uh, models. Those have been uh, built on SageMaker Hyperpod. The latest versions of uh, Stable Diffusion models, um, they have been built on Hyperpod. Uh, Perplexity AI is another um, import, you know, big customer of ours, and they've yep. trained their models on Hyperpod as well. Um, we love Perplexity, so, by the way. Shout out to Perplexity team. We love keep getting that, that uh, silken uh, angling great work in there. We, <laughs> it sucks up all we don't mind real time <laughs> information. No, they we're real time. But they're they're, right. they're good. Yeah. I mean, they're getting great data. That's right. And I hear they're getting real low level and integrating in 
that the trend is to get to the SageMaker piece from a developer standpoint. Others like Anthropic's close into the training, Trainium levels too. So this is a trend. People it, are getting down and dirty developer-wise. Yeah, and like, not, not just Gen AI startups. It's also, you know, uh, Salesforce, for example, they use SageMaker HyperPart for fine-tuning uh, models, and they also were our beta customer for uh, the recipes uh, that we launched. And so we were super excited to get there. Okay, so if you had to make a recommendation to your best friend who's sitting there scratching his head or her head and saying, hmm, I really want to turn up the action in my company. I got all this data. It's on-prem. Uh, I want to move it to the cloud, start taking advantage of some of the goodness here. What, what would you say, what would you be most excited to recommend? It's like the favorite dish at the, at the restaurant, you know, go, go, with, go with this entree. What would you say to someone? I would say is now SageMaker is now the center for, you know, for your data and AI. It's ready for you to bring your data in and you can manage your end-to-end -end data to an AI model running in production workflow through SageMaker. And tailor the performance levels to exactly what you need. Exactly. It has right all the tools structure. to optimize a performance of your models yeah. and run them at scale. Uh, and of course, you get the security and privacy of... Um, you know, in every, in every wave, Dave and I also, we're going to do our QPod after this, um, and we'll probably talk about this, but Dave, in every wave, we, we talk about the uh, price performance. We always compare like the PC revolution, when the chips were getting better, the next 86 comes out. Um, it was always the price performance. It was Now it's back. You yeah, still have your price performance. So we're in a similar cadence of the performance is getting better, but at, but price is still high, but the performance is higher. So price performance price is a performance. super important benchmark. Uh, tell us your view on this and how SageMaker is designed for me. So I'm always maximizing and riding the best price performance wave. Because you know, in those cycles, by the way, we, again, we talk about this all the time. The software guys just wrote fatter software. I say fatter software, but more software because it could run faster. So right. the apps got better. So yep. we, well, it'll be different in AI, but but similar trajectory. Uh, definitely, and it's happening in many ways, not one. So first of all, the underlying infrastructure itself, you know, are the accelerated uh, compute instances that that we that we offer to customers using SageMaker from Trainium from Trainium One to Trainium Two. Uh, you know, the, the price performance benefit uh, improvements that we're driving, as well as it's not just the instances, but as well as the software optimizations, right? We have various uh, software optimizations that optimize how uh, efficiently a training job runs or how efficiently an inference request is served. So that also, those improvements, we continue to add new improvements over time. So that is also continuing to improve the price performance aspect uh, of running AI models. And then at the same time, the tools that our customers use, whether it's data scientists or MLOps engineers mm -hmm. uh, or data engineers now, they are also continuing to improve. So that in yeah. when the productivity or, or efficiency yeah. is, is improved, that also, in, uh, I would say, improves the price. Okay, my final question is, uh, you're the general manager, yeah. which means that you have a business you're running with SageMaker, which is consumption-based. Um, it's very clear now kind of where it fits. What's the business goal? Because product get the product market fit, as we all know, you get, but it's growing and expanding the portfolio. What's the business goals for SageMaker with, with the team? What are you guys uh, trying to do? What's the focus? Well, the focus across AWS and I would say across Amazon really is we, we like to obsess over our customers and we uh, work backwards from their needs and... Uh, Part of our roadmap uh, of what we build, our products, is informed by just features that our customers ask us for. But a, a big part of our roadmap is also about understanding and anticipating the challenges and inventing on behalf of customers. Okay, so what are those needs so, now? If I'm a customer, what are they? What am I saying? What's the what's the hot feedback that you're working backwards from? What are they saying? I need this. Go faster. Is it just the classic? Give me more performance or more GPUs or what? What's the main? Um, Things well, are working back from well, some of the feedback that we got around how customers wanted our data and AI tools to work together, that we've addressed through the new SageMaker Unified Studio. Uh, now, there are other things that uh, we expect customers to, you know, to, <laughs> to always ask for improvements on, which is things like better performance, so uh, cost. lower cost, yes. better price performance. Yeah. So those we know are things that were, uh, you know, are, are a constant, right? So. We know we know that those are things that we always have to invest invest in. So we'll continue to have uh, uh, 
you know, product investments in, in those dimensions, for sure. Did we get all the launches? Or there are many, many more? Well, there's one more I'd like oh, to yeah, talk please. to you about. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, you know, many of our customers, they told us that, hey, we love SageMaker, but we also like this other third-party tool which solves a specific problem, and we, we, we'd very much like to use it together with SageMaker. But today, in order to do that, we have to spend time integrating those tools with SageMaker, and also, we don't want our data to be mm. to be spread across other third-party tools. Mm. So he said, "Okay, well, let's see how we can solve that problem for you." And you know, like I said, we work backwards from our customers, and and we like to offer them choice. So uh, we announced yesterday we announced uh, SageMaker Partner AI apps. Yeah. Um, so as part of that, we've announced four apps. Uh, one is Comet which is uh, popular for AI model experimentation. The second one is Fiddler AI, yep. which is known for AI observability. Then Deep Checks for AI model evaluation. And then uh, the fourth one is Lakira Guard, which is for AI uh, model security. So these four apps, third-party apps, are now available as managed applications within SageMaker, um, which means that customers can yeah. spin up and deploy these applications within SageMaker without managing any infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And when they use these applications, their data stays within the SageMaker uh, development environment and the data is never shared with any third party. So yeah. uh, and that's uh, available. That's available, generally available. Everything GA yes. in yes. your <laughs> bailiwick. Yeah, that's good. Hey, great to have you on the queue. I'll end on one uh, tweet. I thought it was humorous to kind of wrap up. Matt Turk from... Uh, when I come see out of New York, had a tweet said, 2010, this is the, the problem for analytics is that our data is messy, siloed, and all over the place. <laughs> Fast forward to 2024. 2016, the problem for BI and ML <laughs> is that our data is messy and siloed and all over the place. 2024, the problem for AI is our data is messy <laughs> and siloed and all over the place. So um, this points to some of the things we heard in the keynote. Yep. Right. Get the horsepower, build some great integration like S3 tables, for instance, which create a lot of yeah. interesting ways to get data out of their silos, get horizontal view. Your reaction to that quote, obviously it's, it's, it's a clever quote, it's, it's yeah. hyperbole, but it just goes that the data is the root of the problem. I think data, well, also applying data to AI because that's how customers now want, you know, uh, realize value yeah. from data. <laughs> so I think, uh, but I agree with you, and that's yeah. the problem we are, Working on solving it with a speaker. Well, Dave, the cube data is not messy. It's not silo. It's free. It's open. It's all over the place. It's out there. We're sharing anger. Thank you for coming on the cube. Great to have you. Uh, we're wrapping up uh, reInvent. Thanks for coming. I really appreciate your time. And uh, congratulations on SageMaker. I Thank like you. the positioning of it. Um, looks like it's going to be a good product market fit. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for okay. having me. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'm John Furrier with Host of the Cube with Dave Vellante. Bring all the action here at AWS reInvent. Thanks for watching.